So about three months ago, I traveled over to Borneo and had some of the craziest experiences with some of the most wild and deadly creatures on earth. In this video, I'm gonna show you some behind the scenes footage from that trip and explain to you what's going through my head when I'm in situations like this. And a snake big enough to take down an elephant with the amount of venom that it carries in its venom glands. And also situations like this. <laughs> Now sadly, I've known people who have died from getting bitten by King Cobras because there's no anti-venom over there. One of the bites that took place was about seven years ago, we'll talk about this later. And the second bite, which I haven't talked about yet, was actually from about a month ago, two months after we left Borneo. My guy, Diaz, actually got bitten by a King Cobra. So we're gonna head down to the dam later, FaceTime him, talk about his story. And then when I want to release the head, the head just suddenly bite me from inside. Yeah, and right, so as you're releasing it, it turns around and gets you on the finger. Yes. But yeah, first off, where is Borneo and why did I want to go there? So Borneo is about a two hour flight from Denpasar Airport in Bali. And the reason why I wanted to go over to that country wasn't even to film all these crazy snakes and crocodiles like we did on this trip, but it was to raise awareness about orangutans. I wanted to go over there and see firsthand what's going on with them, with the deforestation. And I just wanted to see this amazing creature which we share 97% of the same DNA as in person. So we flew into Borneo, straight away met up with Diaz and Hari, which were the guides for our trip. Absolute legends. If you ever want to go to Borneo, check them out on Instagram. They do some really cool things over there. And it was crazy. I was super tired after a big day of traveling, but we literally got picked up at the airport and we're on a boat heading out into the jungle to these national parks which hold these orangutans. Now it's this massive cruise ship like boat similar to the one that we took over to Komodo Island at the end of last year to film Komodo Dragons. We were sleeping on this boat, living off it for the next three days. Even cruising up the river on the way there we were seeing orangutans up in the trees. We were seeing proboscis monkeys cruising up the riverbanks. They're the ones with the massive noses. And yeah we were going on night trips into these national parks looking for other animals, finding big tarantulas, snakes out in the little kayaks. Keep in mind, this river is filled with saltwater crocodiles. We saw some big salties and some false gharial while we were over there. And it's so crazy to me that the locals are just okay with taking these little canoes up these rivers with these big saltwater crocodiles. And yeah, throughout that time period, we were going into these national parks and working with these orangutans. So it's day two at the moment. We're just heading to the second place where we're gonna be looking for orangutans. There's a few big males that live in this area that we're hopefully gonna be able to get on camera. But yeah, beautiful day out here in Borneo. Let's see what we can find. So we're just walking into one of the parks at the moment. And we've got a little orangutan right here. Beautiful little male by the looks of things. Just laying down on this boardwalk. Doesn't have a bad life laying down here in the shade. Such crazy creatures, beautiful animals. In the last 70 years, their population over in countries like Sumatra has decreased by about 70%. Now the thing is, that was the only reason why I went over to Borneo to film this one video about orangutans. But the majority of what we filmed came within the next seven days that we were over in Borneo. So after having that eye-opening experience about those great apes out in the jungle of Borneo, we headed to a small village. It was called Batua Village way up this river and we stayed with the villagers there. There was probably about a hundred people living in this village alongside this river that is filled with big crocodiles. It was crazy to me. There was little kids swimming in the river out the front and you'd see big saltwater crocodiles swimming past out in the middle of the river. A few kilometers up at the mouth of the river where the people hunt the crocodiles, hurt them, poison the water, take more fish than they need to. There's been about 30 attacks in that village. In this little village where they don't do any of that, there hasn't been any. Only thing we were thinking is if there's not a very good population of crocodiles there, maybe that's why there was no attacks yet. But yeah, we were seeing them cruise up the middle of the river, which was 
Pretty crazy when there's little kids swimming around. Now they actually had a little pet saltwater crocodile and since we couldn't catch any crocodiles while we were up there, we thought we'd take this croc way up the river, get some shots in the water with it, go for a swim with it and teach people about these animals. Now this croc was around a meter long, could grow another four meters in its lifetime if it's lucky. And yeah, we did exactly that. We were swimming through the water with this crocodile, talking about it, picked it up on my shoulder. <laughs> so we got to take him back at the moment. So I've just decided to chuck him on my shoulder because he actually went a fair way up the river. And we'll walk the big fella back in. Just another day in Borneo. <laughs> That's it. I'm up. So obviously this isn't a fully wild croc. You can build a relationship with these crocodiles. It's a lot harder than any other species, but as you can see right here, I've got one on my shoulder. Wouldn't be trying this out in the wild. Whatever you do, do not try to pick up a wild crocodile because you will get bitten. Pretty cool experience though. We know these animals are unpredictable and it would be totally our fault, of course, if we got bitten by it. The final shot we wanted to get was holding the crocodile up to my face. So first we tried it underwater, ended up getting a really cool shot of it on the bottom of the river. And the final shot was its face holding up to my face in the river. Tried it once, tried it again. Third time, whack. Uh, yeah, you got that. Yeah. Okay, one more, one more, one more. One more, please. Yeah. Oh! oh. oh. Ada anu kah? Tai kopi. Tai kopi, kopi, kopi. Kopi anu lu. Should we wash out first or okay? Later. Later. Do you think when you wrap the first yeah. part, did you clamp it together? Close it? Yeah, uh, how do you do this? Ah, yeah. yeah. And then you wrap. Yeah, you feel good, it's closed. Yes. <laughs> it's a bit. It's a bit dizzy. Dizzy. Yeah. Because the blood. Of course. Yeah. Because we were in the water when he got bitten, there was so much blood coming out of right here, and we thought that that artery or vein, whatever it was, got cut by the crocodile's tooth. So we closed it up. Got it back to the village. On the way back there, Hari spotted snakes in the trees and was trying to get us to stop. <laughs> We were like, no, we're getting you back to the village. Got him back there, cleaned it up, missed that area. He'd been bitten by crocodiles before, it was totally okay. And yeah, later that night, we were back out there looking for more animals in the river. Thank you, my love. Hi! 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 Hey. Hello! Hello! <laughs> Hello, Melar! <laughs> <laughs> so what we'd do is we'd go out into this river and we'd cruise up it, really big river that snakes through the jungle of Borneo. And we'd have so many eyes spotting out from the canoes that we were cruising in. So what type of frog is it? Hurry up, false swim toad. False swim toad? Yeah. Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll say the first one. So okay. we've just spotted a false swim toad. This is a really big animal sitting up in this tree right here. We're above crocodile water, but I might climb up here and see if I can grab him. I'll chuck the GoPro on. Okay, I'm here. Oh, good boy. I prepared to do your. I prepared to jump. Okay. Got him. Yeah! Whoa! <laughs> He is massive! Here. There you go. That is crazy. That is such a cool looking animal. That's the one that my wife loves it. Oh really? The false swim toad. Swamp. S S W A M P. Swamp. Oh swamp. Right. 
So it's actually called the False Swamp Toad. I got the name wrong of it, but that is a crazy looking animal right there. Such a cool catch as well. So you can see those webbed feet at the back there, used for swimming. And these big toads are actually feeding on insects mostly, but seeing as they get to this big size, they can also feed on lizards and other things like that as well. Well, that's such a crazy looking animal to find out here on this little boat trip in Borneo. And all the animals come to the, to the river. Oh. <laughs> Not yet, mate. <laughs> we'll let you go soon. I didn't even know that these guys existed, let alone we're out here in the forest. But yeah, they're kind of like the cane toads back in Australia, the same size, but completely different appearance. Let's keep going up the river and see what else we can find. That false swamp toad that we spotted up in the tree was actually one of everyone's favorite animals when they saw the video. And rightly so, it's such a cool toad. Such a weird looking creature to find chilling up above the water. But yeah, we found more little snakes on that trip. Later that night at the village, we found another python. It's all right. If it bites you, it's just bleeding. <laughs> <laughs> so this is called a blood python we just rescued him from this little village right here for their size about just a meter long they're a very fat snake so these pythons actually live down holes and they're coming out at night what this guy'd be doing is he's hunting coming out here trying to feed on rats but how the villagers actually hunt them is they'll find these holes have to dig these snakes out of it and then they'll cook them up and as you can see What's in my hand right now is a lot of meat on it. What do they taste like? It tastes like chicken. <laughs> yeah. Everything tastes like chicken. So we're actually going to move this snake out of this area of the village because if the villagers do end up finding it here, they're going to cook it up. A good stuff because there is a hole inside. <laughs> yeah. So the next few days consisted of lots of exploring, trying to find as many species of animals as we can, lots of eyes out there in the jungle looking for these animals, and it paid off because we found lots of different species. <laughs> Look. Uh. Oh. <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Crazy man. <laughs> oop, 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 he bite me. <laughs> I don't want to bother you, my brother. So let's go, okay? Sorry, I'm so sorry. Okay. Come back. Beautiful. Beautiful. Good job, Diaz. <laughs> Let's keep going. We we're finding wild orangutans, heaps of snakes, heaps of birds. But what I want to mainly focus on is one of the days that we were out there in the jungle. Because looking back at it, what we found in that one day was crazy. Now, it started off pretty chill. We found a baby king cobra. They're still just as venomous as the big ones. You wouldn't want to get bitten by that snake out there. <laughs> yeah, better. Okay. But yeah, just picking this snake up right now. That is absolutely beautiful. You can see him standing up in that little hood position, looking at the camera. I'm always amazed coming out here to Indonesia and finding these snakes. Done it a few times over the past few years, and that right there is just so cool. The King Cobra out here in the jungle of Borneo, highly venomous species, and a species that carries a massive energy about it as well. When you get a big king cobra looking at you in the face, it's a pretty crazy feeling to say the least. And hopefully we're gonna find some bigger ones over this little trip. But yeah, look at that, juvenile king cobra. All right, we'll let him go, mate. See ya. And then after a bit more searching out there in the jungle, our guide spotted a huge reticulated python. And I can tell when he's about to strike, he kind of gives me a warning. He opens up his mouth a little bit. I'll see if I can move around, if we'll do it again, all right? Ready? Three, two, one. Wow. There we go. You know, that's not a warning that a small animal, or when they get big enough, even a human will get. Whoa. Nearly got me, mate. We'll just lift him up right now. Oh. There we go. You can kind of get a bit of an understanding about how big this snake is right now. He is massive. This trip to Borneo has seriously been crazy. 
We've spent a lot of the time out here in the bush looking for snakes and it's paying off because we found some epic creatures, epic animals and had some crazy experiences. So what we filmed next was a five meter king cobra out there in the jungle of Borneo. Now, whenever I'm going over to these countries and I know I could come in contact with these big king cobras out there, in places like Western Bali and Borneo, there's no anti-venom, so I know how dangerous this is. You get whacked by a big king cobra out there, good luck surviving. Now, our friend and our guide who we worked with the first time we worked with king cobras, when I was 12 years old, over in Indonesia, we filmed some absolutely incredible things over there, and a month after we left, he got bitten on his pinky finger, wrapped it up, got to the hospital, and as soon as they took that little compression bandage off, or rubber band, whatever it was, he sadly passed away. And it's the harsh reality of not having an anti-venom for King Cobras over there in these countries. Especially if you're way out in the forest living out there, it's pretty much a death sentence if you get bitten by these snakes. And we knew that. So whenever I go over there to work with these King Cobras, I take the pressure off myself straight away. I'm happy to film them. I don't want to do anything too crazy, but if it feels right and the connection with that animal is strong, then we go for it, and we went for it this time with this big five meter king. Now this king cobra was going off to begin with, launching at me, nearly getting me, nearly getting my guide. My dad was actually over there with me filming these big king cobras this time around, and the final shot that I wanted for this clip was me holding up this five meter snake. So I calmed down, picked this snake up, so intense focusing so that if this thing decides to turn around and try whack me on the face I can get out of the way talking about it for about two minutes put it down check the footage there is no footage because he was so worried about me he forgot to film the whole thing which meant I had to do it again even more deep breaths had to fully reset there's no time to be frustrated let's do it again so I picked this snake up even more intense this time talking about it for about two minutes put it down check the footage it's overexposed and I'm half cut out of the shot. Are you trying to kill me, dad? Did it again, got the shot, and it ended up being really cool. I'm gonna to attempt to pick it up at the moment, this big snake. And what I wanna show you is the reason why people can kiss these snakes on the back of the head and touch them is because they go into a trance-like state when they're fixated on something right in front of it. So he's fixated on my guide at the moment. And what I'm gonna do is slowly pick it up. Being very careful. Oh, take a look at that. You're right, buddy. Big King Cobra out here in the jungle of Borneo. Look at that. That is a magnificent snake. And a snake big enough to take down an elephant with the amount of venom that it carries in its venom glands. And a snake big enough to take down 20 of me. You can't get bitten by this snake out here. Highly venomous species. But a beautiful animal. An absolutely amazing animal. And this experience right here is what I wanted to have coming to the wild lands of Borneo, out here in the jungle, looking for these snakes, looking for orangutans, looking for all these animals. And I'm gonna remember this moment right here, but gotta be very careful. All right, buddy. A five meter king cobra, the biggest venomous snake in the world, and a magnificent one at that. Can't even fit my hands around it, this snake's so big. I'm gonna put him back down. <laughs> the funniest thing that I realized when I got home and edited the footage was I was picking that snake up for six and a half minutes <laughs> trying to get that last shot, which is just crazy with a big snake like that. Going over there knowing what a bite from a king cobra can do, I had to have the conversation with my dad that if I was bitten on any of my fingers, you had to just chop it off straight away, which is not a convo many kids have with their parents. He asked me, what if I get bitten on the hand or further up? I was like, all right then you can just leave me. I'm taking the risk of a dry bite for that one. But yeah, that was absolutely crazy, especially coming over to Borneo, thinking I'm just going over there to film a video about some harmless orangutans. 
and I end up doing that. It's a pretty wild experience. And yeah, after filming that big king cobra and having those crazy experiences with those deadly animals already, we found a spitting cobra right after that, just crossing the road. Because in a minute, he might spit his venom. There we go. A little bit just got on my lip. And after filming that, it stopped raining. I was already soaking wet at this point and we were walking up this track and found a red-headed crate. Now that one is more venomous than the King Cobras, drop for drop. They got a lot more stuff going on in their venom, which you don't want to get tagged by just as much as the Cobras. So it was a day of just constantly having to be fully aware of everything that's going on because one mistake out of any of those snakes, apart from that big four meter reticulated python, you're probably gonna die out there. Even the reticulated python wouldn't be that fun to get bitten by. And yeah, after that, I was happy with what we got filmed that day. Decided to go back to the village chill out for the afternoon. The people at the village were cooking us fish that they just caught, it was so beautiful. And actually in that village, none of the kids who were there had ever seen white people before. So I was laying on the floor in this little hut next to this river and there was 20 kids looking at me through the windows as I'm just chilling there, which was a pretty cool experience. But yeah, left Borneo, left the boys, flew back into Bali and started editing up the videos. And that's the series that you see on my channel and I think it was probably my favorite series I've ever filmed. We've been doing a lot of cool road trips recently filming different animals but yeah that was definitely one to remember. Gonna be going back to Borneo early next year hopefully. So Diaz Borneo. About a month ago he was working with a big king cobra getting it back out there into the wild. Had it in a bag and it actually bit him on the finger. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get him on a FaceTime call to talk to you about this story and how he actually survived this bite. Some of the natural remedies that they use when they get bitten by these snakes over there in Borneo. Hello, my brother. Diaz Borneo, how are we going, brother? I'm doing good, my brother. Do you wanna tell me what happened when you got bitten by that King Cobra? It was on Friday. I don't know, on Friday, there are already three of my friends loose on that day. On Friday. Were you saying three of your friends have been bitten on Friday? On Friday, yes. On Friday. And all of them all of them are passed away, you know. Yeah. But at that time I need to release the snake, I say I said to myself. And we have five King Cobra in total that we want to release to the jungle. First one that I want to move from the container box to the sack. I move it with the hoop. Nice and calm and then put it inside the sack. I swap it with my other hands because it's outside of the sack to hold the head. And then when I want to release the head, the head just suddenly bite me from inside. Yeah, and right, so it, as you're releasing it, it turns around and gets you on the finger. Yes, turns around and get my, into my finger. Luckily at the time, maybe just a little amount of venom, I think. I keep trying to stay still, relax, enjoy the coffee. <laughs> yeah. Because at the time, we waiting for the taxi driver for like approximately 20 minutes. My wife helped me to increase my immunity system. Like I usually did when I got bitten by a venomous snake, using the garlic, honey and stuff, and I eat all of it. <laughs> so you've been I eat bitten by many venomous snakes before, and every time you get bitten by one that's highly venomous, you eat a lot of garlic to boost yeah, your garlic. immune system? But still, I do a first aid. Compression bandage. First aid, yes. When I'm walking into the car, I feel it, you know. Yeah. It's it's hard to bleed. There was one moment when I'm, when I'm already on the hospital, my tongue get numb when they when they already get injecting the anti venom. When you say anti venom, it's not actually King Cobra anti venom, is it? It's, it's from not, a, it's, it's not. from a different snake, so it doesn't work as well as if they actually made King Cobra anti venom. Yeah, my friend Jordi said to me, it's not really helpful with that. It needs a lot of piles, you know. Yeah, the other thing that I was thinking is. You've been bitten by venomous snakes your whole life since you were little. Different species of cobras and everything. So maybe you've built up uh -huh. a small immunity to the venom. Could be, my brother. I'm really sleepy at the time. Yeah. So I'm sleeping. And then wake up. My father and all my family already there. And it was quite funny because I think, oh, am I dying? <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to keep me to stay more days on that hospital. And they want to inject more anti venom to me. And Jordi <laughs> said no. Jordi has big no for that. The next day, after the bite, 
we directly go to the mangrove areas to <laughs> looking for <laughs> you're a crazy man Diaz the most powerful things it's your it's it's your mind if if your mind if if, if your mind or what you are thinking is always positive and always not not give up with your life because at the time my my son was crying and so I see my wife I, I said to my to myself I need to be alive you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> I need to fight with this venom and yeah the God the God bless me and I and I still have a chance to continue my life I say to myself also if I'm dying and here maybe my picture when they are post my picture, it's still smiling, you know. Yeah, so are all the photos. <laughs> You're it, smiling in everyone. It, it's, it's still, yes, it's still a handsome picture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Be careful, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> you are also crazy guy. You too, Diaz. <laughs> no, you're more crazy. Yes. See you, brother. I think this time around, he was really lucky that he didn't get a big dose of venom because that's when it can get seriously dangerous over in countries like Borneo and Bali. All right, and that's it for another video, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this one. It's been really cool reflecting on that trip over in Borneo. Such an epic trip. So many cool animals and experiences. I'm glad I could film it for all of you. I got a lot more cool trips coming soon. In a few weeks, I'm gonna be road tripping into the outback, looking for the most venomous snakes in the world, doing some survival videos out there, seeing what other cool animals I can find. And then I'm gonna be heading up north. My mates are gonna be meeting up there. We're heading back to the place where we filmed those crocodiles not too long ago. Living off the land out there, doing some fishing videos, exploring. Back down to the sunny coast for a week and then over to Indonesia to do some more filming over there. Thank you so much for allowing me to do all of this stuff. I'm so grateful. And yeah, we got some really cool adventures coming soon here on YouTube. New video out next week, part two of my Snake Island adventure. We found some really cool snakes in that second part. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you legends next week in the next adventure.